Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, thanks for tuning in again, and sorry for the delay in putting up a new video. Um, I know some of you have been really enjoying them, and I really appreciate your feedback um, and some of the ideas that people have given, and also some of the things that I've, I've kind of missed as well in some of the settings and stuff in previous ones, which is what I want to cover today. Um, I want to cover two things today, and that is channel strip settings, which is a really huge part you can use you know, for any production style, uh, for any song that you're working on, whether you're doing voiceovers uh, for, for, you know, for radio or for podcasts, or if you're mixing, um, if you're mastering, uh, if you're just creating songs and beds, keyboard tracks, drums, whatever, like channel strip settings are a huge, huge and efficient way of, of working. Um, you can save channel strip settings um, and you can also just um, cycle through, through them all to see what fits. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. And the second thing is just um, in the tracks here, um, some people are saying that they're missing some of the buttons. And I think I may have just missed a couple of things to add in there. Uh, in particular, um, well, let's just jump into that first of all. So example here, um, these are all software instruments, so not all the buttons are going to apply because they're not audio. Um, but if we go to track and configure track header, it will give us the options here, what we want to show and what we don't. So um, depending on your screen resolution, um, that will also depend on what sort of happens uh, here and how far you want to sort of drag this across there. Um, so sometimes I'm just, you know, you're trying to sort of uh, keep it all a little bit sort of tight because you're limited with uh, real estate on your screen. Um, so you may not want to have some of these. For example, if you tick these or untick those, all of a sudden you've got heaps more um, screen to, to work with. Uh, I do like having color bars um, because you can sort of change different areas of, of songs, your instruments, vocals, that kind of thing. And it's just a, an eye-catching way to know where you are um, if, you, if you've got like a large sort of arrangement of instruments. Okay, so uh, another important one is the one that I didn't cover was the freeze and protect functions. Um, I'll just so now that we've ticked those on, they're gonna they're gonna stay there. Um, and example, if this particular plugin here is using up a lot of CPU power, um, then basically um, you can just hit freeze and hit the space bar, and it will just freeze that. And what I forgot to do was end the. Uh, the, the end of the song, so it, it just basically does it all the way to the end. So I've only got an eight-bar loop here. So let me just now I've got to unfreeze that. I'm just going to change that back to here. Um, and now, if I were to freeze that, it won't take as long. There you go. So now everything is frozen here. Um, you can't actually change any of the, of the plugin settings, including the instrument. Um, however, you do have more resources now on your computer, um, which is basically lighten the load for you. Uh, so another really cool thing in there is, just say you've got a fairly complex MIDI part or something here where, or even a vocal um, that you just don't want to mess with, you don't want, you know, uh, if someone else is sort of jumping on the computer and they're not really familiar with logic or whatever, you just want to make sure that they don't sort of move anything or or nothing gets yeah shifted. Um, you just hit lock on there on the track, and now it's not going to move. So that's really handy. Um, if you've got a very complex sort of um, complex waveforms, that's I always I always do that because sometimes the, the most minor thing can move, um, and you weren't aware of it. Okay, so that's that's track header uh, configuring the track header. Uh, let's move on to channel strip settings. I'm just going to unlock these and unfreeze these. Uh, okay, so with channel settings, channel strip settings, example, I'm just going to play a bit of this. It's uh, nothing fantastic, but uh, it will help you understand what I'm trying to teach here.
Okay, so we've got four layers there. We've got some drums, we've got some bass, uh, we've got some strings, and a little sort of leady thing that's come, coming in and out of there. Uh, what we can do is, for example, this is such a cool thing in Logic, is we can go on the trap thing here, and if you go to the, uh, the library here, you can then start choosing different sounds. So not only does it pick different sounds for you, but for example, here we've got the drummer uh, channel. Um, if we go to Morris, go from Des to Morris, and all of a sudden you'll see all the, the MIDI information in there is sort of not, uh, is changing as well. So I'll just clarify, it's not actually MIDI, it's just um, Logic's uh, waveforms, but you can convert it to MIDI. There it is. Um, if you wanted to go back to the drummer regions, there it is. Um, so as you can see, um, it looks completely different. And that is because uh, Morris um, is a different kind of drummer. So let's totally change the vibe. Uh, if we go to Anton, it's kind of like more of a like a hybrid, like a hybrid between um, Des and Morris is Anton right in the middle there, um, and that's just a really quick way to cycle through some of the sounds. And you can, you know, again, just that was literally just from one library. We've got three different options there for hip hop. Uh, if we move to electronic. Uh, R and B songwriter, they got you know all these different types, and you can just pick any one of these, uh, and it's going to change the region and the sounds. I'm going to back to Morris, I think, for some reason. I'm not sure why I'm liking that right now. Okay, so that's that's just one thing that we've done there is change the channel strip settings. Uh, right there and you can also access them here so you can copy this um, so base for example we can now go here logic base and this is one way of doing it you know it's um you can basically change any of those sounds to different sounding instruments and it will come with eq and reverbs and that kind of thing um, but if you do go to the library it gives you a whole bunch of different um, options as well. Uh, all right, so let's go to the, um, the strings and the pads. Um, we can go this way here, go to some legacy settings. There's a whole bunch of there, or we can go through to the library here. Yeah, I'm a little afraid to open some of these up, but anyway, I'll do it. Uh, Let's go sunrise chords. And basically all I'm doing uh, is just double clicking on those. Okay, so that's that's a, a cool way of working, you know, it really is. Um, another interesting thing that um, some people don't know is if you actually, so that's basically the top of the of this, the whole channel strip. Then what you can do is you can actually go into the sub menus here. So example, this has got some plugins on it, it's got some delay, okay. So what you can do here then is click on that element of of it and then all of a sudden it gives you different options for just the pedal board um, you know so that's pretty cool uh, again also with the delays it will just give you these sub menus for delays um, is it maybe you, maybe you like the sound but you just hate the delay on it or um, you know so that's extremely handy and and once you've done that in, in something that you like you can save that you can save that as a channel strip so there we go save um analog spheres mod you know 
um, or whatever you want to write in there. And then when you go to a new session, you can open, go to here, and then anal analog spheres mod will be in there, and you can basically go from go from there. Um, and you don't have to sort of remake the sound all over again. So that is channel strip settings and configuring the track header. Um, if there's anything else that comes to mind in the next uh, week or so, um, I will do it. Um, and yeah, as you actually, whilst we're here, um, whilst we're here, um, we can also go to settings up here. So if you go to settings here, and all of a sudden it can give you. Um, so example, this is my master bus, my master output there, and I kind of like what I have there. I might just quickly save that um, as, um, you know, just call it master one. So now I can go to user and there it is. And there's other ones that I've got set up. And, you know, if you want to also change that to, um, you know, they've got these kind of like pre-mastering kind of things that you can go to, to modern rock or um, hip hop. There we go, let's change it now. And all of a sudden it just changes the entire channel strip and the sound obviously has changed and everything. Um, again, we might like everything about it, but maybe not the multi-band. Um, we can go then there and just change that element of it, double click on it. And now that channel strip, that multi-band is different to what it was before. Um, okay guys, well, there it is. Um, I hope that's been really helpful um, and have fun making music. Cheers.